Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to, um, this is the information session for the special emphasis notice, the send for the applicants to advance health IT standards and tools to improve social determinants of health data exchange and to develop tools for making electronic health records data research and artificial intelligence ready. So thank you for joining us. All right, so here's the, our agenda for the day. Uh, first, we'll have the introduction of speakers. We'll have some reminders and some housekeeping. We'll go through the SEND, uh, do some background information on the LEAP, uh, talk about funding eligibility and application information, and finally, application responsiveness and merit review criteria. So speaker introduction. So my name is Tavon Taylor. I am a grants management specialist with the Office of the Procurement and Grants Division of ONC. Um, Kevin Cheney will also be one of your speakers today. He is the Senior Program Manager for the Chief Scientist Division of ONC. Um, his colleague, Sherilyn Pruitt, is the Innovation and Engagement Branch Chief for the Standards Division of ONC. And our moderator is Mr. Derek Ware, who is the Procurement and Grants Division contractor. So first housekeeping, this webinar is being recorded and will be made publicly available. All phone lines will be muted during the presentation. If you have questions, please enter them into the chat box. And the webinar and FAQs will be available at the link provided. Um, something to note that all questions will be answered in FAQs that will be made public after each week. So how to ask a question. If you have any questions during the presentation, please follow the instructions below. You will use the Q&A function to, to ask your question. So there are three steps. Number one, along the bottom of the webinar window, you'll find and click the Q&A button. The Q&A panel will then expand on your screen. Then you will input your question into the Q&A box, and then click send. And in the event that you do not want anyone to know who you are that's asking a question, you have an uh, anonymous button said you can send anonymously, you can click that button and your name will not be attached to your question in the Q&A. And if you have additional questions um, after today's webinar session, please direct them to the following email, onc-leap at hhs.gov. And at this time, I believe I'm turning it over to Sherilyn and Kevin. Hi, thanks. This is Kevin Cheney. Um, I want to thank everyone here today uh, to tune in uh, to learn a little bit more about this year's Leading Edge Acceleration Project, or LEAP, uh, and Health IT Special Emphasis Notice um, uh, for the two areas for this Notice of Funding Opportunity. Uh, next slide. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, this year for the special emphasis notice, there are two areas of interest, uh, which you will hear about each of them today. And we intend to make one award per area of interest. And it'll be $1 million per award, I should say up to $1 million per award. And the period of performance is, uh, you know, you have to do at least two years, or I should say at the most two years, um, and then proposals may have an additional three years. So it would be a total of five years um, uh, that you can propose for uh, as part of your project timeline and plan, uh, but you ha must have the required two years and the potential again for up to three years, which is subject to availability of funds and meaningful progress that's made during the first two years. Uh, we're asking that uh, those of you who are interested to send your letters of intent uh, by March 23rd of this year. So uh, that's quickly coming upon us. And then applications uh, will be due on May 10th of this year. Next slide. 
As I mentioned, uh, this year there are two areas of interest for our special emphasis notice for LEAP. The first one is area one, referral management to address social determinants of health, SDOH, aligned with clinical care. The second area is health IT tools to make electronic health record data, research, and artificial intelligence ready. And I would like to make a special note uh, to those who do apply, please indicate clearly in your application which area of interest that you have applied for. And application packages that are addressing more than one area of interest. So if you are putting together an application that's trying to address both of them, they will not be considered for award. So you need to focus on one or the other area, uh, not both. And please make sure that uh, you explicitly describe whether it's in your abstract or uh, you know, in the introduction of your uh, application that uh, you say which area of interest that that application is meant to address. Next slide. Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and Pruitt. Uh, Kevin and I are gonna tag team throughout this presentation so you get to hear uh, different voices so it doesn't get monotonous. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, area one, referral management to address social determinants of health allow aligned with clinical care. The goal of this area is to pilot health IT standards and non-proprietary innovative approaches for managing care referrals for social services and support and secure communication tools for non-clinical health supporting services needed to ensure care referrals and the bi-directional exchange of electronic health record, health information across these organizations to keep patient health records up to date and represent longitudinal and person-centered health and care. Next slide. The objective for area one, the area one recipient must first demonstrate social determinant of health data and exchange and manage care referrals based on identified individual social needs in a real world setting that constitutes closing of the loop between clinicians and community-based stakeholders through pilot projects that demonstrate the exchange of one or more social determinant of health domains identified by the Gravity Project. Pilot this approach in at least two jurisdictions to ensure the approach is scalable and replicable to one or more of the social determinants of health domains, regardless of locality. Proposed projects must incorporate a minimum of one of the following existing standards and or implementation guides. Social determinant of health clinical care, uh, in implementation guide like Project Gravity, 360X, Electronic Long-Term Services or, and Support, ELTSS, or another emerging nationally relevant, recognized and available health IT standard, including those specified in the ISA, the Interoperability Standards Advisory. Next slide, please. The Area 1 recipient must develop and or use any non-proprietary tools necessary to successfully complete the project. Engage with, effort, engage with current efforts to inform future implementation efforts and further existing standards development activities, including testing and update of standards used in the project as necessary. Work with existing community-based organizations to ensure alignment with the needs of community health centers and other existing local or community resources. Identify gaps in coding and terminology standards to support the advancement of the use of cases and standardization of social determinants of health data. And document technical requirements for social or community service organizations to send and receive referrals and associated clinical information using the proposed standards and document the level of re readiness and or feedback from implementation. Next slide. Again, content, vocabulary, and transportation standards to, to support the exchange of social determinants of health data. Uh, this is the required expertise. Stakeholder coordination with clinical care providers, community-based organizations, health information exchanges, and or community information exchanges. 
and workflow and technical architecture that supports referral management. Other requirements include the applicant must also include a coalition of key stakeholders along with letters of commitment who will be directly involved in the project. Applicants must not rely on a single vendor or proprietary technology. All right, area two for this year's special emphasis notice for the Leap and Health IT program is health IT tools to make EHR data research and artificial intelligence ready. Again, with one award up to $1 million. The goal of this area is to develop tools for making EHR data research and artificial intelligence ready by systematically measuring completeness and quality, improving interoperability, and automating assessment of data, their features, and provenance through the standardization of open source health IT tools that can be enhanced or expanded to improve the cross-institutional sharing and use of high quality data for computation to provide universal solutions to problems faced by researchers. Next slide. Area two associated objectives. For area two, the recipient must implement a phased approach for the enhancement and or development of open scalable health IT based tools to boost high quality data for training, learning, modeling, and analysis in coordination with relevant stakeholders including but not limited to federal health research funders, researchers, i.e. potential tool end users, and health IT developers to advance their use in at least two of the health research needs identified above, and provide sp specific examples of the types of research and artificial intelligence algorithms and or applications that would benefit from these data. Next slide. Further, the Area 2 rep recipient must demonstrate their tools for preparing research and artificial intelligence ready EHR data in partnership with at least two other institutions. It is desirable that institutions use differing health IT systems from different health IT developers. Partnerships should be formed to demonstrate generalizability and provide external validity of research findings. Involvement with federally qualified health centers and small sized healthcare providers is strongly encouraged to demonstrate tool scalability with providers typically unable to participate in research. Recipients must also develop and implement a comprehensive dissemination plan to scale and spread their awarded projects findings and outputs to be used by other relevant stakeholders. Next slide. For area two, applicant required expertise, we're looking for those that have, are able to address issues with quality and completeness of EHR data and their suitability for use in research and for artificial intelligence development and testing. Have a background in health informatics and the use of health IT and electronic health record data for research, as well as common data models used in research, such as I2B2, PCORnet, OMOP, or FDA Sentinel initiatives, also, the use and understanding of open data standards, including FHIR, research tools, and electronic health records. An understanding of research tool development, implement implementation, and use, including user-centered design and testing of such tools. The applicant should also have research enterprise and research processes expertise around things such as patient identification, data sharing, consent and privacy considerations for sharing clinical data for research and artificial intelligence development and testing. Patient consent and consent management, electronic health record data aggregation and curation, assessing and addressing electronic health record data quality issues relevant to research and artificial intelligence development and testing, as well as AI training data set development. Next slide. I'm going to talk a little bit about the background for how LEAP in Health IT, how the notice of funding opportunity came about. Next slide. The LEAP in Health IT seeks to address well-documented and fast emerging challenges inhibiting the development, use, and or advancement of well-designed interoperable 
health IT, which is scalable across the healthcare industry. Next slide. Applications submitted under this special emphasis notice will be funded under the LEAP and Health IT Notice of Funding Opportunity, NAP-AX-18-003. Aside from areas of interest, required expertise, and the deadline listed in the special emphasis notice, all other requirements, application instructions, and terms and conditions of this NOFO apply. Next slide. Eligible applicants. This is a competitive funding opportunity open to public or nonprofit private institutions, such as a university, college, or a faith-based or community-based organization. Units of local or state government, eligible agencies of the federal government, Indian, Native American, tribal governments, federally recognized, other than federally recognized and tribally designated organizations. For-profit organizations may participate in the projects as members of a consortia or as a sub-recipient only. Because the purpose of this program is to improve healthcare in the United States, foreign institutions may participate in projects as members of the consortia or as a sub-recipient only. They cannot be an applicant. Organizations described in Section 501c4 of the Internal Revenue Code that engage in lobbying activities are not eligible. HHS grant policy requires that the grant recipient perform a substantive role in the conduct of the planned project or program activity and not merely serve as a conduit of funds to another party or parties. Applicant organizations may submit more than one application provided that each application is scientifically distinct. Next slide. Deliverables. For each area of interest, Applicants shall submit a draft project plan as an appendix to the application with corresponding table of key dates and milestones to ensure objectives are met within the self-contained two-year period. Recipients will also conduct virtual midpoint demonstrations and update any of their proposed approaches, prototypes, and or enhancements to illustrate their progress on the selected area of interest. For each area of interest, applicants shall provide a deliverable table that consists of expected deliverables, which will be produced in support of execution of the cooperative agreement and the due dates. Next slide. Okay, so for those of you looking at this, this is, this is the type is small, but I'm gonna go over it. Uh, this is the deliverable table. And the first thing that's listed is the draft project plan and timeline. The due date is not less than one month after the award date. The recipient will receive a detail, will submit a detailed draft project plan that should include, but is not limited to, key milestones, identified risks and risk mitigation strategies, stakeholder coordination as applicable, and timeline. Second thing is midpoint demonstration update of proposed approach, prototypes, and or enhancements no later than 13 months after the award date. The recipient will provide ONC with a live virtual demonstration of their project progress to date. The third deliverable is a midpoint specification, revisions, revised project plan, and timeline as applicable, again, no later than one month after the completion of deliverable two. And based on the milestone and project progress up to the midpoint, in addition to feedback from ONC from the midpoint demonstration, the recipient will submit a revised project plan and timeline and initiate any specification revisions as applicable. The fourth deliverable is draft legal and policy landscape assessment, and that's due no later than 20 months after the award date. The recipient will submit a draft assessment that addresses the impact of legal and policy factors on project goals. The fifth deliverable is final legal and policy landscape assessment. That's no later than 22 months after the award date. The recipient will submit a final assessment that addresses the impact of legal and policy factors on project goals. And the sixth deliverable is submission of final approach and if applicable prototypes, i.e. computer software, including all associated code and tools, and or enhancements, as well as making prototypes publicly accessible for approval by ONC. 
Next slide. Key milestones, developing an initial two-year project plan, delineating components that will, com that will complete in two years, as well as longer-term components if proposed, establishing a technical expert panel to review research methods, results, and provide guidance, implement the plan to translate project outcomes into broader uptake, scheduling and conducting as appropriate and participating in expert panel meetings, team meetings, and stakeholder meetings, conducting and managing project to conclusion in two years, conducting and managing long-term projects to significant demonstrable progress in out years if awarded, and communicating findings through appropriate mechanisms and making available as they are generated. Next slide. I'll now go over the funding, eligibility, and application information for this year's special emphasis notice. Here are some of the key details that you'll wanna know uh, for submitting an application under LEAP and Health IT's Notice of Funding Opportunity. This type of award is a cooperative agreement. The available funding is $2 million, and the number of awards to be made is two awards, one million for each award. The application due date is May 10th, 2021. The an anticipated award date is July 1st, 2021. The performance period is two years again, with an anticipated start date, also July 1st, 2021. Again, the number of awards and available funding uh, will be determined by each area of interest, as well as what the available funding is for this year. Next slide. Letter of intent. Applicants are strongly encouraged, but not required, to submit a non-binding email letter of intent to apply. We are asking those to submit by March 23rd, 2021, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And we'd like you to identify the name of the applicant organization, organization type, city and state, as well as marking that this is NOFO number NAP-AX-18-003. With the title LEAP Special Emphasis Notice, Applications to Advance Health IT Standards and Tools to Improve Social Determinants of Health Data Exchange and to Develop Tools for Electronic Health Record Data Research and Artificial Intelligence Ready. And please note which area of interest you are int intending to apply to. And please send this letter of intent to ONC-LEAP for LEAP at hhs.gov. Next slide. The application process. Applicants must submit all material electronically through grants.gov. This process is outlined in the Notice for Funding Opportunity. For assistance with submitting applications on grants.gov, please contact the grants.gov help desk at support at grants.gov or call 1-800 518-4726. Applicants must have a Dunn and Bradstreet DNB universal numbering system or a Dunn's number. Applicants must register in the system for award management or called SAM at www.sam.gov and allow a minimum of five days to complete the registration. If you are already registered in SAM and have not renewed your registration in the last 12 months, you must renew your registration. Applicants also must ensure that their application meets the requirements and page limits set forth in the NOFO. Next slide. What are the application components? The components of your special emphasis notice LEAP application will include a project abstract, no more than 500 words, a project narrative, which includes up to 35 pages, along with Form SS-424, Application for Federal Assistance, Form SF-424A, Budget Information for Non-Construction Projects, Form SF-424B, Assurances for Non-Construction Programs, Form SF-424C, 
LLL disclosure of lobbying activities, along with a budget narrative and a letter of commitment. Next slide. Project abstract. The abstract represents a high level summary of the project that can be understood without reference to other parts of the application. And that provides a description of the proposed project, including the project's goals, objectives, overall approach, anticipated outcome, products, and duration. The format is not more than 500 words, double spaced, include the project title, your applicant's name, physical address, contact name, contact phone numbers, including voice or fax, email address, website address, if applicable. Next slide. Project narrative. The project narrative should address the elements articulated in the funding opportunity description, section A, and adhere to application and submission information, section D, in the NOFO. The project narrative should align with performance goals and milestones with merit review evaluation criteria also presented in the NOFO. Applications that did not follow the outlined format must be reviewed by an ONC designated official. For this format, we're asking for double space and no more than 35 pages, formatted to eight and a half by 11 inches, letter size, plain white pages, using either Cambria or Times New Roman font, with one inch or larger margins and a font size of 11 or greater. Next slide. The project narrative should include the following components. These components will be counted as part of the page limit. The suggested lengths of the sections given below are recommended guidelines to help applicants create a balanced document and not mandatory restrictions. Number one, area of interest, vision statement, and key challenges, roughly two to three pages. The next section, proposed approach, 10 to 14 pages. Project team two to three pages exclusive of biosketches. Section four is planned for disseminating and transitioning appropriate research results into practice, two to three pages. Section five, stakeholder coordination, roughly two to three pages. Section six, project management, three to five pages exclusive of project timeline and organizational chart. Section seven, organizational capability, two to four pages. Next slide. For the area of interest, vision statement and key challenges, this section should offer the applicant's conceptualization of the selected area of interest. This should also include from the applicant's perspective, a specific delineation of the objectives and research challenges the proposed project will address specifically distinguishing between challenges that can be addressed in a self-contained project period of two years and future challenges requiring, requiring a longer period, three to five years. Applicants must clearly state which area of interest from the special emphasis notice the proposed project will address in this section. Next slide. Section two, proposed approach. Applicants should provide a clear and concise description of the approach that they are proposing to use to conduct the research and development work, including identifying the major challenges in the focus area and how to advance the field via proposed activities to meet the objectives of that specific research area. Applicants should have their approach organized so that the relationship of each element of the plan each of the area's objectives and associated activities are completely clear. The development or employment of novel concepts, approaches, methodologies, tools, or techniques, or a combination of common research elements in an innovative fashion should be described, as well as how it will generate much needed insight to inform the field of health IT. In this section, proposed strategies on how the results of the project may be disseminated and transitioned to the field at large should also be noted. Next slide. Proposed approach continued. The approach should include as much detail as possible given the page limitation. 
the plan for each activity at a minimum must state specific aim, previous work of the investigative team on which the proposed research is directly based, the methods that will be applied, the anticipated outcomes of the work, and their potential significance in addressing the challenges of the focus area being addressed, the key personnel who will be involved. Next slide. The project team. This section must describe the proposed research team's expertise and experience and include the following. A project director or principal investigator, at least one person on the proposed research team must possess health IT expertise. For area of interest number one, the proposed research team must have expertise in the areas outlined in the special emphasis notice. And you can see slide 11 of this presentation for what those were. For area of interest two, the proposed research team must have expertise in the areas outlined in the special emphasis notice for that area, which can also be found on slide 16 of this presentation, as well as within the NOFO. The application should include a biosketch for key project personnel. Next slide. Section four, plans for disseminating and transitioning appropriate research results into practice. This section should describe a plan for engaging health IT stakeholders and interested groups in promoting the dissemination and transition of appropriate research activities and results into data standards, data infrastructures, health IT products, tools, and or best practices. The plan should be specific in proposing activities that will disseminate and transition the results of the proposed self-contained two-year projects and products and best practices, as well as collaborative arrangements with industry and other groups outside the applicant institution should be accompanied by appropriate letters of support. Next slide. Section five, stakeholder coordination. This section should describe plans to establish and operate a technical expert panel of relevant and appropriate stakeholders, including the names of members who have committed to join or propose to join to help inform the work to be conducted on the relevant area of interest. Next slide. Section six, project management. This section should include a clear delineation of the roles and responsibilities of the principal investigator participating researchers, project staff, consultants, and collaborate, collaborating organizations, and how they will contribute to achieving the research object objectives and outcomes. If the application includes subrecipients with contractual relationships, plans for coordinating research activities across multiple organizations should be described. This section should specify who would have day-to-day -day responsibility for key tasks, such as the leadership of a project, monitoring the project's ongoing progress, preparation of reports, and communication with other collaborating organizations and the Office of the National Coordinator. Recipients will be required to maintain information relevant to proposed milestones and performance-based outcomes. Next slide. Project management continued. The application should describe the approach that we use to assess project performance and monitor and track progress toward meeting key milestones. The application should include a detailed project timeline as an appendix that incorporates those milestones and an organizational chart as an appendix that reflects roles and responsibilities. Next slide. Section seven, organizational capability statement. This section should outline the established research program relevant to the research focus area and highlight established collaborative relationships with healthcare stakeholders. The statement should highlight potential strategies the organization may employ in an effort to sustain research efforts beyond the scope of the project timeline. It should include the relevant organizational resources available to perform the proposed project, sample given facilities, equipment, and other resources. The statement should also highlight capabilities of the applicant not included in the program narrative. Applicants who are working with partners as part of a consortia must also provide letters of commitment from their proposed project partners. Letters of commitment shall be included with the appendices and do not count towards the 35 page limit. Next slide. For the budget narrative and budget form, 
applicants must complete the following to document costs of proposed project activities. The budget narrative on how the proposed budget aligns with the applicant's project narrative. Application for federal assistance, form SF424. Budget information for non-construction program, form SF424A. Assurances for non-construction programs, form SF424B as well as Disclosure of Lobbying Activities, Form SF-LLL. Detailed budget instructions are provided in the Notice for Funding Opportunity. Next slide. Now I'm gonna go over how your application will actually be evaluated. The application, this section is the application responsiveness and merit review criteria. Next slide. The application review process begins with submit all application materials electronically through grants.gov. Grants.gov issues an email receipt upon successful submission. Applications are reviewed for responsiveness and categorized as pass, fail. All applications that pass the review for responsiveness are forwarded for merit review. Once the merit review is complete, ONC may make an award. ONC is not obligated to make an award if none of the applications meet the intent of the program requirements or if there is a change in funding levels or availability of funds. Next slide. All applicants must meet the following completeness criteria or they will be administrative, administratively eliminated and not sent forward for merit review. One, the applicant meets the eligibility criteria. The, applicant is received, the application is received by the deadline of Monday, May 10th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time through grants.gov. And the application contains all the required components, including the program narrative, the SF-424 form, et cetera. The, applicant, the application meets all formatting and length requirements. Appendices and attachments are not used as a mechanism to exceed page limits of the project narrative. Next slide. Merit review criteria. Responsive applications are forwarded for merit review. Merit review conducted by a review panel of at least three experts in their field from academic institutions, nonprofits, and local and federal government agencies. Applications can receive a maximum of 100 points using the following scale. Understanding the project, the uh, understanding of project purpose, 10 points. Approach and activities, 40 points. Applicant capabilities, 30 points. Budget, level of effort and justification, 20 points for a total of 100 points. Next slide. Merit review criteria, understanding of project purpose, 10 points. How well does the application address the purpose and objectives of this SEN and identify a, spe a specific research area of interest? To what extent is the proposed project and activities parallel SEN goals and objectives associated with one of the two identified areas of interest? The extent to which the applicant has identified an imp important, coherent, and parsimonious set of challenges and associated research questions with one of the two areas of interest that are, if not addressed, will be clear barriers to advancing interoperability and or advancing clinical knowledge at the point of care. The extent to which the applicant describes how the project and expected outcomes and results will inform the field and future health IT development, research, and implementation as appropriate. Next slide. Approach and activities, this section is worth 40 points. The extent to which the proposed research methods promise to address the challenges with breakthrough findings on a proposed timeline within the parameters of a self-contained two-year project period and potentially longer project period if funded. That area is worth 20 points. The next section is the extent to which the applicant proposes a clear and detailed transition dissemination plan. The extent to which the plan to transition and disseminate results to, to products and best practices 
is complete and feasible and envisions the release of the outcomes of their research into open source communities. That section is worth 15 points. And then the final section, which is worth five points, the extent to which the plan describes a project management approach for ensuring project success within and across collaborators. Next slide. The next section, applicant capabilities, that's worth a total of 30 points. Strength of evidence that the project brings an appropriate level of research and technical knowledge and expertise for the chosen focus area and strength of evidence that the project will integrate the efforts of those team members. That part is worth 20 points. Extent to which the proposed activities bring all the resources necessary to perform the proposed work and the identification of proposed strategies to complete activities within a two-year time frame and sustain research efforts beyond the time, beyond the project time frame. That, er that section is worth five points. And the final section that's also worth five points is the extent to which the scientific environments in which the work will be done contributes to the probability of success, employs useful collaborative arrangements, and has evidence of institutional support. Next slide. Then the budget, level of effort, and justification section that's worth 20 points is the use of consultants and or sub-recipients appropriate and adequate to advance the project in accordance with the timelines. That section is worth 10 points. And the extent to which the budget is justified with respect to the adequacy and reasonableness of resources requested and the amount of the budget allocated to administration is minimized while still allowing coherent management of an integrated project. And that section is worth 10 points. Next slide. Uh, thank you, Sherilyn and Kevin. Um, so now we're on to the question section. All questions must be submitted in writing, either by the Q&A function during this webinar, and many of you have already submitted questions, or you may email them to onc dot leap at hhs.gov. And questions submitted today in the Q&A function will not be answered today. All questions will be answered in the form of a, an FAQ and be made publicly available each Monday at the link provided. So that completes the end of uh, this information session. Thank you for attending. There will be five remaining minutes online. So that's the time that you will use to submit any other questions that you may have um, in the Q&A function. Also to see the SEN um, or to apply, you can go to grants.gov. If you wanna see the SEN, go to grants.gov. To apply, you can go to that website that's listed there for you. And if you have any uh, questions about how to apply, um, please contact the grants.gov help desk at support at grants.gov or call 800-518-4726. So now we're entering that five minute period for you to submit any other questions you may have and you may do that now. Um, so these are some dates to remember uh, for our LEAPSEN FY21. The release date was February 23rd. Today, March the 9th, is the information session, and letters of intent will be due on March the 23rd. The application deadline is May 10th, and the target award date is July 1st. So the moderator will now end this session. And again, we want to thank you all for participating in our information session for the LEAP SEN 2021.